This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, this is Alex, this is The Ramble, we go until midnight tonight, and we start off with a rerun of an old interview with, uh, well, you'll see. Look here, folks. Ladies and gentlemen, boy, are you bundled up. That, that That's Stephen Kravitz, ladies and gentlemen, up in Massachusetts. It, it's hey, not, it's that cold, huh? It's cold. What what's with the uh, with the uh, uh, you know heat? Don't you have heat in your apartment? My heating bill last month was three hundred dollars. Oh God, that bad? Yeah. Well, my electric bill last month was three hundred and forty four dollars, but I've got I don't know twelve rooms in here, eleven rooms. Right. Then I've got like one, two, three, four. Uh, five television sets, okay? Plus really? I've got one, two, three, four, five computers working all the time. So that's why my bill is so high. In fact, yesterday it was freezing in the apartment because we have this uh, radi- these radiators, or as, right. my, as my wife calls them, radiators. Radiators. And I try to tell her they're not radiators, they're radiators. They don't radiate, okay? <laughs> they radiate. <laughs> but Point she, made. She won't Point listen. Point made. Oh, yeah. So anyway, oh, I, t- I changed your name last time on here. We have to change it again, I guess. No, wait a minute. Uh, uh, un- unmute yourself, will you? I just muted you by accident. Um, let me see here. A rename. Uh, what name would you like today? <laughs> huh? <laughs> Just Kravitz. Oh, Kravitz. Okay, Kravitz. I, I don't know why this changes itself after I do it. I guess I d- guess when I do it, it doesn't hold it. But there we go. See? Now look how I can rename him, ladies and gentlemen. There we go. There you see, go. see? It's uh, that simple. Anyway, where are we? Oh, yeah. So, uh, 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 you know, my electric bill is high, too, but, I mean, how many rooms do you have? Let me see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on a second. You you, you can find yourself a seven-room apartment? Yeah. <laughs> Laundry room, second bedroom. Yeah. First bedroom. Yeah. Walk-in closet. Well, that doesn't count. Okay, kitchen. Yeah. Living room. Yeah. Pantry. Mm. You know, I mean, yeah, I guess I would count them. If I was counting rooms right now, I would count like this is one, two, three, four, five, six, pantry, seven, because it's a big, big pantry, seven, um... I got more rooms than that. I'm trying to figure out the rest of the rooms. Anyway, I've got something like what they count it as like about ten or eleven rooms here. Yeah, it's twenty five hundred square feet. Is that good enough for it? It's bigger than most homes. Uh, it is. Yeah, but it it, it three hundred and forty four dollars a month for electricity. And I, I talked to my Sorry. wife last night. I said I think we got to turn off some of the TV sets. You know, because we have all these TV sets. And uh, they're they're eating up a lot of energy, you know. So Are she, they on all the well, time? Well, she turns the one on here in the office, and then she turns one on in the living room, and then she turns one on in the kitchen, and then she comes back here to work, and all those are going at the same time. Okay. All right. Secondly, you know how you can cut down on your uh, on your bill. You know that little box you get for the cable. Yeah. Do you know how much that costs you a month in electricity? No. Eight dollars a month, on average. Just a box. Yeah, I got six. I got five boxes here. I'm paying forty bucks in extra electricity just for the boxes, and if they're not turned on, they're still on. 
So there's there's a little hint for you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you folks, if you have more boxes than you need, it's something obscene about what I just said. If you have more yeah. boxes than yeah, you I need. I left it alone. I left it alone. Well, we used to have more boxes than we need. Now we have more than enough. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Uh, but if you have more boxes than you need, take one of them offline. Get uh, unplug it. Don't use it. I I can't do that because we use all of them. You know. Right. So, uh, but it is there. These things cost a, a lot of money, and I don't know why somebody doesn't say, let's make a cable box that doesn't cost that much money in electricity. So anyway, you look like you're ready with your look today, like you're ready to go with the Donner Party. <laughs> yeah, going out for lunch. Years ago, Bobby Slayton got married um, at um, what? I think I guess it was Harris on the North Shore. Yeah, not, not Harris. It was Caesars on the North Shore. And uh, it was there was this like uh, what could we call it? Meadow to the side of the place, and right. you could rent a sleigh that would hold like about 10 people and you could go out into this meadow. So they said, okay, we're, we rented the sleigh and we're going out into the meadow to get right. married. And we go out into the meadow and it is, it is freezing. freezing, just freezing. And so bad that the guy who was right running the sleigh had a mustache and a beard and it was frozen. Okay, that's how bad it was. And so everybody's huddled up like you look right now, right? Like this, right? right. And I, I took a picture of them all. This meadow, and I titled it the Donner Wedding Party. And we're going out to the meadow to get married. I mean, it was, it was it was brutal. It is free. Just brutal. Was it just this past month? Huh? Well, what month no, was oh, it? no, no, no. This was years ago. Yeah, but what month was it? Was it winter? Oh, it was it was like December, January, probably February. Like, you know, those months where it's really cold. We think of December as, oh, that's winter. But it really, it, anybody who lives in the areas we do knows that uh, uh, January and February are brutal months. And if we're lucky, we get an easy March. Right, if we're lucky. If we're lucky. So, and, uh, but, uh, but, so how cold is it? How cold is it up there? Right now, it's probably in the 30s. Really? What is it here? I can look at my watch and find out. Oh, it's 52. 52? 52, yeah, yeah. You can go out jogging. I, I, my wife is out walking right now with her girlfriend. And she said when she comes back, you want to go for a walk? And I go, is that exercise? And she goes, yes. And I go, no. Oh, who's calling me? What is this? What is this? I, I shouldn't have even brought the phone in here. There we go. Turn it off. Uh, let me let me get rid of them. It, it's us, it's usually those damn. What do you call? You don't get those calls yet, do you? You just recently moved in, so I don't know if they have their phone number yet. Do they? No, uh, my phone number hasn't changed in oh. thirty years. Oh, okay. So you have the same phone number. Yeah, yeah. Of course, we take cell phones with us now. So you get a I, lot. You you get these calls, don't you? These these robo calls. Oh yeah. You know the oh, one, yeah. You know the ones that bother me the most. Not the robo call that starts off and hi, you we're we're calling from Visa. Blah 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 right, blah. Right, 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 right. I don't mind that. What I mind is when I pick it up and there's nothing. <laughs> there's just nothing and the thing that bothers me the second amount of much <laughs> the second amount of much i just invented a new term the second amount uh it are are the ones i get with people start talking in chinese really yes you don't get any of those i don't answer the phone i don't answer numbers i don't i don't recognize i no neither do i you know but, uh, you know, if you call me, it comes up Alex. But the problem is that sometimes the person who's calling you is someone uh, that you really want to hear from, you know, that you have a reason to hear from. Right. Uh, um, like, uh, you know, a doctor or something like that, and he, 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 his number just doesn't, you don't recognize it, say, so go, okay, all right. Right, blow it off. Uh, listen, I tried to call you a couple of days ago, but nobody answered. Well, what's the problem, doctor? You're dying. 
you know, I mean, right, 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 right. I'm back. How when, how long do I have to live? He said, "Well, I didn't know if I would get an answer when I called." You know, so. But uh, it, it, you look all bundled up, and you haven't been out much, right? Oh no. No. Oh no! Oh no! No. I, I'm bundled up to go get the mail. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, so so um, you're bundled up to go get the mail, but you don't. You, you, I asked you this last time. You, you haven't had the shot, or you can't get the shot. You're not old enough. I'm not old enough. I'll be old enough in two weeks. In two weeks, I think. You, couldn't you kind of fudge it? You know, because if you make your appointment now, you probably won't have it for two weeks anyway. So just say you're six. You're sixty-five, and then when you go there, show them your identification. It'll probably be. A, a, fine then so you should you should go try and make an appointment now all right you know that's, right. that's my suggestion to you right yeah but um um you've been feeling okay right you, oh you were on some medicine last time we talked right the uh hepatitis medicine yeah and that's all finished up finished up actually last week tuesday mm -hmm. and I'm starting to feel a little more energetic because that medicine really knocks you out. Knocked me out. Plus, yeah. in two months that I was on the medication, mm -hmm. I gained 16 pounds. Wow. I am now, my Indian name is He Who Has Girth. <laughs> he Who Has Girth. <laughs> well, I'm taking a pill that does that to me, too. You know, I've gained about 20 pounds or something because I've been taking it. Unbelievable. This yeah, well. You know, um, I lost a lot of weight a while back, about 60 pounds. Right. And I was happy with that. And then all of a sudden I'm getting back like 20 of it, you know, because of this, right. you know. So, I mean, it, it just, but that's what happens is you get older, they just go, oh, take the pill. Here's a pill for you. Right. Go ahead, take it. You know, right. what does it do? We don't know, but just take it. You're old. Just try it. You're try old. It. You're probably, you, you know, it. of course it's addictive. Of course you're going to have a heroin habit, but, you know, you're going to be dead in a few years anyway. Yeah, so, you what know. the hell? Yeah. So they always have this, you're going to be dead anyway attitude about me. And I go, Jesus Christ, you know. Then I'm I'm looking last night at a, at a list of people who are old, actors who are old. And, and there were names on there. Suddenly I realized I hadn't heard from them in years. Right. And they they didn't die. They just got older. How old do you think Jane Hackman is? No idea. 91. Right? Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm thinking, 91, and I'm 81. That's 10 years from now. I'm watching porn that's older than that. You know, <laughs> Good night. Good night. You know, I mean, see you around, folks. I don't know. I, uh, who, know who knows? Maybe I'll live to be 100 like my mother. But my I, grandparents both lived to be over 100. Over 100? Yeah. Really? And my mother made it to 100. She, It's like she hit the finish line, and she said, I'm through. I'm out of here. Right. You know? Well, my, my grandfather was 102, mm -hmm. and my grandmother was 104. Wow. Wow, well, you got some great genes there, then. I have some very good genes. Yeah, and that's the reason you abused your body all those years. That's exactly right. Because you figure that, you know, you've got a certain buffer. <laughs> <laughs> now, maybe you won't live to be 104, but you could live to be 91 and still do all those drugs and all that partying and all the other stuff that you did. Right, 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 yeah. right, right. Who I could outlast them all. Who said? Who who was the person who said? Uh, uh, if I uh, I wouldn't have done if I knew I was going to live this long, I wouldn't have done all those drugs years ago. <laughs> you know, I mean, is it, is it, isn't it a, like a water cooler joke? It's a cliche. Yeah, yeah, it, and it is. I mean, but the truth of the matter is that when you're younger, you just what the hell? How long am I going to live? Yeah, right. you know. And and you do you do a lot of stuff to your body that later on in life you go you know if I hadn't done that I wouldn't be feeling like I'm feeling right now. Yeah, and I have money in the bank. That too, that too. I I go why didn't I save that or why didn't I buy that stock? You know. Right. You know, right. Right. Why right. didn't I buy Facebook when it was three cents a, a share? Right. I had a company. I worked for 
Sirius XM, and they almost went bankrupt. They almost went belly up. And the week that they were belly up, their stock went to five cents a share, I think. That's how low it went, like five really? cents. Five, five, five cents a share. And I thought to myself, I should buy this. You know, I could buy, I have $10,000. I should buy $10,000 worth of this stock right. at five cents. But I didn't. And I was working there. I knew what was going on. I didn't know whether we were still going to have jobs the following Monday. But I, right. you know, I figured, hey, if I do this and it goes belly up, then I lose 10 grand. But then I don't know what to do. If I had invested that 10 grand at five cents, it's now around $6. Right? Do the you math. Do. Do the math. You'd be a very wealthy man. Exactly. Exactly. So, I, you know, I, I, I don't feel good about that. I wish I hadn't spent all that money that I spent back in the early days and banked it a lot, you know. Yeah, but you know what, Alex? I, what? You, you can't take it back. It, it made you who you are. Just yeah. deal with it. Yeah, well, I spent all that money, believe it or not, back then taking guys like you out to dinner. Oh yeah, you know, I, every, everybody went, who went to dinner with me knew that they were were going to have to pay, and I did it also because the comics were making me a living. You know, right. they were helping me out. So hey, who, what do they need most? Food in their mouths, okay? You know, and right. a nice dinner somewhere. So I would take them to dinner. You know, and and, right. no, and nobody ever said, "No, oh, Alex, I'll pick up the check." I never got that. Never happened. You know, you knew when you went out with Alex, he was going to pick up the check. We, uh, we always thought the radio station was picking up the check. Uh, uh, uh. But I picked up the check uh, for another reason. Um, I don't like fighting over the check. Right. Like, what did you have? Right, <laughs> you right, 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 and, right. And, and then some guy at the table who's good with math is adding up what everybody owes. No, fuck it. Here, I'll pay. Use my card. Right, 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 right. And I had enough money to say, you know... I'll I'll take care of it. I won't let it bother right. me. So, but uh, so you're you, so you're feeling better now. And oh, yeah. uh, how do you find out whether you have uh, what was it hepatitis C or not? Uh, three months May. I, I have blood work done, mm -hmm. and it should be undetectable. Mm -hmm. Isn't that great? It's Isn't that wonderful. amazing? It, 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 it's amazing. You know, we, we when at times we wonder if science can really help anything. We do. We have cured things, you know? Yeah, we talked about this, yeah. now, how AIDS is now undetectable. Yeah, AIDS is undetectable. Uh, what else is it that we, well, of course, we got rid of polio. I mean, that, yeah. that was a biggie, too, because when I was growing up, every kid I knew had polio. I, I knew a kid that had polio. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, there's always some kid who didn't come to school that year because they were in an iron lung at home. Right. You know, I mean, right. it was a it was a terrible, horrible disease, and it went after kids more than it went after adults. That's right. The only That's thing is, right. when FDR had it, um, he was a rare adult that got it to that extent. I mean, he, right. was, he couldn't walk. Uh, but I mean, uh, it, so we do we do cure things, you know. And I th think we're taking care of this COVID nineteen now with this vaccine. So, you know. I hope so. Now, now, have you gotten your second one yet? I'm going to go get my second one on on Saturday. Uh, and uh, uh, I understand with the first one, they now have found, and in Israel, they came out with a report, they have found that with the first shot, you're 90% protected. Really? Yeah. They just want the second shot as a booster <laughs> to kind of just keep it rolling. Right, but that, but, but that if you didn't get the second shot, you'd at least be ninety percent protected. And I, uh, another guy was on TV the other day saying that no one who has gotten the shot in this country has come down with COVID. Or if they came down with COVID and we went to the hospital, they went to the hospital. It wasn't serious enough to hospitalize them. Right, right, so right. So that right. that's a pretty big advance, and that's a big jump we made in a matter of months. Yes, you know. Yes. So good. And now somebody good else is coming us. out with a third vaccine. Yeah, oh, there's a third, there's a fourth. You have Johnson & Johnson, you have, uh, then you have AstraZeneca, which is, right. is, comes out of the Europe, I think. Uh, and uh, it, it, they're all supposed to be fine. You know, they're all supposed to do the job. The but, thing is, getting the shots to us. Well, putting them in, putting them in arms, as they say. 
Right. Uh, and, uh, you know, every state is trying, and they're trying really hard. And, uh, uh, you know, they're doing what they can do because the Trump administ administration did nothing, did absolutely yeah. nothing. Uh, they uh, denied its existence for the longest time, and when they finally didn't deny it anymore, they weren't wearing masks or showing people good behavior during a pandemic. Right, right, right. So, I mean, uh, we're, 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 we're on our way to a solution, okay? I think by, by Christmas of this year, people are going to be able to go to thank Christmas parties or go to Thanksgiving dinner. And yeah, not that'd really, be nice, wouldn't and, it? And really not have to worry about it, yeah. Yeah. Well, no, I'd say, I have. how many Thanksgiving dinners have you gone to with relatives? You know? My question is, do you want to go to more? <laughs> <laughs> There's always that uncle you hated or the, you know, somebody, right. you know. Or the arguments that broke out between relatives. That's the other one. That's uh, always a pleasure. Hey, by the way, I, I'm running over here, and I don't care. I like talking with you. D have you watched this? Uh, do you get HBO at all? No. Are they, they're running this Woody, this uh, Mia versus Woody documentary. Oh, yeah? Yeah. And it's so unfair to Woody. <laughs> it's ridiculous. You know? And, of course, he's not going to sit for an interview. He doesn't want to. He, right, he, right. You know, the interview he's, I saw an interview he did in 1992 that was, that said it all. He he literally sat down with 60 Minutes and said, I usually don't talk. I wasn't going to talk about this, but it's just become so pervasive in my life that I've got to somehow set the record straight. Okay? Right, 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 and right. And he set the record straight. There's nothing in this documentary that's any different than the conditions were in 1992 when this whole thing started. Right. And they, if nothing more, they should have gotten the 60 Minutes interview and run stuff from that. Instead, they went to his audio book and stole a, a, a reading by him from the book. Okay? I mean, it's, it's terrible. It's a terrible piece of journalism. And uh, shame on HBO. Uh, right. You know? Yeah. And, and I, what bothers me is... And it would, I, you know, and you can, you certainly can feel this way as well because you're a comedian and you create, and you know, uh, here's a guy who probably is having, he's having a very hard time finding funding now, not because his movies don't make money, right, but because of this whole thing that's going on. He's having to get European funding now. He's having to make his movies in Europe. Uh, he when's, the last, when's the last time you heard of a, or what was the last Woody Allen movie? Well, there was one about uh, two years ago, I think, if I'm not mistaken. I'm trying to remember the name of it. It was not it was Wonder Wheel, I think it was called. Really? Uh, it was on, and they ran it on Amazon. Uh, but I, you know, outside of that, I mean, I, I just, it bothers me when a person is accused of something. But nothing right. has, he's never been found guilty of that. He's just been accused. And because of the accusations, he can't work anymore. Right. It reminds me so much of what went on in the McCarthy era. Sure, you know? the blacklisting. Yeah. I mean, and I say this for everybody Kevin Spacey's never been found guilty. Uh, Louis C.K., who you may have known, I knew Louis quite well. Yeah. Hasn't worked really since. And he, all, he, all he was was accused. And then he took the high road. He admitted to it. Right. You know? And instead of everybody saying, okay, you admitted good to it. You. Bravo. Good for you. No, you can't work anymore. We're letting go of all your contracts at this network and at that network. And he had a lot of things going, right? Right. He uh, did a lot of voice work. He did animation films. Yeah, but he also did. He had like three or four series he produced on cable. Right. You know? And he just wasn't able to work again. And, and, and that bothers me because he's such a talented man. And all that happened was a bunch of women said they saw him, they, he had him in his hotel room, and he said, do you mind if I pull out my penis? And none of them said anything, so he pulled it I... out. All right? First of all, he should be lauded as a gentleman. <laughs> because he asked first, okay? You know? 
End of story. Hey, listen, we're running out of time here. We've talked for tw about 24 minutes. All right. Uh, no, actually, I have. I'm sorry if I haven't let you say anything. That's all right. I'm good to listen. <laughs> I hope you enjoy these little sit-downs with us. I, I, yes, I do. I certainly do. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Stephen Kravitz. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. Well, I'm sorry if we were a little out of sync in that interview. That interview was done quite a while ago, as you can tell by the topics that we covered and so on. Uh, and um, uh, it, uh, you know, it it was a it was a problem. Uh, but uh, but it was out of sync it, it, in those days, especially the interviews that I would do went out of sync, and uh, so that was a that was a real problem. I got a little couple of things I want to show you before we uh, we get going here. Um, um, I uh, we do a show on Mondays at four o'clock, and um, it's a great group of people. They're really wonderful, and it's a warm show, and it's it's not contentious on any level, and it's just an hour of just friendly talking among friends. All right, and I really like it. And uh, one of the two of the people we have on it. Uh, uh, one is a woman named Mandy, uh, and the other is a guy by the name of Len. And it turned out they were both going to the same place at the same time for a vacation. And so they said they'd meet up with each other. And then they, what they did was they sent me this. And we'll send it to, okay, um, I'm here with Len. Oh. <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> I wish we were broadcasting live on Facebook, but we're not. <laughs> We're just sitting here. We'll see you on Monday, though. Yes. Yeah, this, this doesn't suck. This doesn't suck. We're just sitting by the, the beach, the ocean, the Sea of Cortez. Uh, yeah. Having a little cocktail. <laughs> Wins having a beer. Yeah. Having no some guac. <laughs> yeah. So we'll, see, we'll talk to you on Monday. Yeah. And there they were, folks. I just, I just wanted to play that for you and let you see it. Uh, we're, you know, and we're waiting for people to call. Okay. So we're getting a couple of people waiting. I just want to show you something that I have here that, uh, I, uh, I, I, I pulled out. We get a report every, every, uh, every year, every year, every month, uh, from my server that serves out the live broadcast and so on. And, um, this is the list of the countries that we get the most people listening from. And we only get about 60 or so. I can't I can't see it that well. Let me see. Let me put on my glasses and see if I can read it because it's too small here on this screen. Here we go. The U.S., we're at 67%, right, of our listening audience is the United States. But look where we have another large audience of like almost 18% is Germany. Are you people out there listening to us in Germany? Wow, that's terrific. That's incredible. Anyway, I think it's time for us to uh, go to our panel. And I have, uh, first of all, we have, let's see, Alan. We'll let Alan in. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll let uh, uh, Jeff Stein in. And now there is a guy here by the name of Robert Coletto. Uh, let me first of all go to the Zoom. There we go. Okay. All righty. Are we okay? All right. We're fine. Uh, and um, let me see here. It, it, a guy by the name of Robert Coletto, and I don't know who that is. So we'll have okay. to find out here. Let's see if it's somebody I have to get rid of really fast. Uh, hello, Robert. Are you there? Robert, are you there? Okay, Robert, are you there? Can you hear us, Robert? Okay, then I'm going to get rid of him. Okay. He was unblocked, now he's blocked. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay, stop. Would you, would you block him? I don't know how to block him. What do you mean? That's what something you, you do. He was blocked. Oh, wait a minute. He says wait to everyone. Well, I can't wait, Robert. For everyone. <laughs> Robert, we can't wait. You know, we're doing a program here. We don't wait on you necessarily call back um okay well i will stop his video 
Uh, let me see here. Yeah. Let me stop his video. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, no. Did I stop you, Alan? I need a duck story. Yes, you bum, stopped bum, me. Bum. Okay. Bum, bum, bum. Okay, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Uh, 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 get rid of... Hey, remove. Move, remove. Okay. There we go. Uh, I bring my video submit. back. Submit. Look, I got to put all these things. This is all the things they do. Okay, now, Alan, are you there? Okay. Let I'm me here, see here. Um, a, a, oh, ask to start video, it says. Um, so I'm going to ask you to start the video. Just okay. to start your video. Yeah, there we, there go. we are. There you go. Okay. <clears throat> it's the three Jews. Yeah. <laughs> from three different states. Yeah. And this is all we're going to get tonight, huh? Is really? this a green screen behind you, Alex, or your actual? I'm in my room? I'm in my living room tonight. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah, yeah. I'm in my living yeah. room. Very nice. Yeah, very nice. Yeah, it's it's <clears throat> it's the green screen, but it's you're a up it's a picture floors, of so it's a picture of my living room. You're you're up eight floors, and I always figured in New York, if somebody got tired of their air conditioner, they unplugged it and pushed it out the window. No, no, you know those things. That one hasn't been <laughs> on in five years. It looks like it's twenty years old. Yeah. No. No, it's not a twenty year. Well, no. that's that. That's um, that's the standard uh, LG. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Please don't insult my my air conditioners. <laughs> okay. Is anybody well, else us... going to call tonight? Is anybody else going to call? Because if not, I'm going to I'm going to shut this puppy down early. Are you going to sleep? Huh? <laughs> hey, you listen. I got other things I can do. Uh, let me see, John Larkin. Here we go. I mean, what's yeah. more important than talking to Jeff and me? Well, I mean, I, you, not that you're terrible or anything, but I like to have at least a nice group of people to talk to, so we get a little round robin going. You know. Yeah. Have you noticed that with Bill, as controversial as he is, Miss Red and everything else, he draws a big crowd. No, he doesn't draw a big crowd. We get a little. No, there are well, nights last when, night was pretty good size. Yeah, but it's not that he's draw he's drawing. It's just that there's certain nights that we actually get more people oh. than others. Oh. Thursday night is terrible, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, Friday night we get a lot of people too. You know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Josh calls on Friday night, and you could say, well, everybody's calling because Josh does. Maybe. Yeah. So. Friday's a big night. Huh. Yeah, Friday's a big Friday, day. everybody. I, maybe, maybe you ought to switch this to do your Monday show, which you enjoy a lot, and then do Wednesday and Friday and <laughs> skip Thursday. That, that might well be, you know. <laughs> or maybe I'll do away with Wednesday yeah. <laughs> you know, and if, Thursday. If this, if this new virus turns out to evade the vaccines, which, of course, they don't know yet, mm -hmm. um, you'll become more popular. A lot of the people that were staying home and watching – Mm -hmm. When I first got on, went back to their jobs and went back to doing things, and mm -hmm. maybe that would end again. Now, here, here's somebody named Smart Ryan Third Grade. Do you think he's oh, for had, real? Huh? Yeah, we had Smart Ryan on here one time. He's the one that told Brian. Well, let's see. To stop here. licking his spoon or let's something. see here because I can I can get rid of this really fast. <laughs> Are you there, Smart Ryan? Oh, oh, I don't know if you remember me. Yes, I remember. Yeah. You do? Yes, I do. Yeah. Wow. I just just got a notification from your stream self. Oh, so you decided to call? Yes. Do you have a camera? Do you have a camera? No, I don't. No, you don't. Okay. Uh, so yeah. how old are you again, uh, Ryan? I'm almost 10. I'm going to be 10 in two months. In no, two, one month. In one month. Okay. And January. Uh, are you still in the third grade? No. No, I'm in fourth grade now. you're in fourth grade now. Um, mm -hmm. So you probably should change that so it says fourth grade. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> where, where do you live, Smart Ryan? USA. <laughs> oh, that's a good answer. How about a state? Where yeah. How about a state? <laughs> he doesn't want to be kidnapped. Yeah. Yeah. That's smart. <laughs> yeah. Are you still there, yeah. Ryan? Ryan just. Changed it. Oh, oh, he said Idaho. 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 He sent the. He yeah, sent but are the, you still Idaho. there, Ryan? Yes. Oh, okay. potatoes. So, anybody want to ask Ryan a question? Maybe Ryan's very smart. I'm very smart. 
Yes. Yes. Okay. That's, uh, okay. <laughs> what we did, haven't seen you in a well. We've well, never you, seen did you, you go to you went to school today, right, Ryan? Yes. Okay. And what did you learn today that you didn't know the day before? Division. Division. Mm -hmm. Don't they teach that earlier? Mm, kind of. Like in first grade? Mm -mm. No. No. no I, I, uh, I used to. They used to have us uh, take a piece of paper and then fold it like with lines down it so they had different lines. And then they would give you a test and they go two times two and they had to write it down and seven times eight and you have to write that down. And I used to get so upset by having to do that, Ryan, that I... Oh. I shook my hand, my hands were shaking, and I could never pass those tests. Nowadays, because, yeah. they do it on computer, don't they, or a calculator? I don't know. Do, do they, are they using calculators with you to learn division and so mm -hmm. on? Huh? You can't use. You can't? It's on the whiteboard. It's on a light board. Oh, in other words, That's in other words, they're not the letting you use a, 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 a calculator. No, they use an erasable yeah, like a chalkboard. Yeah, 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 I know that, but what I'm saying is, I would think that in this day and age, it would be important to teach them how to, not so much um, how to do it on a piece of paper, but how to come about the answer. And that would mean that you could take a calculator and get the answer that way, you know? Or you're right. Uh, let's see, another message from Ryan to everyone. Send a multi multiplication problem. Okay. Don't make it too complicated, Jeff. And it's okay. I'm not gonna do it. Okay. No. Well, multiplication. Okay. Well, first, let's just go two times sixteen. I mean, two, mm. yeah. Okay. Two times sixteen. Here we go. Thirty. Thirty-two. He just wrote it down here. Wow. Is that the right answer, guys? I don't know. Yep. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you. What Jeff is uh, say, Jeff, you back. have one. You have one. Give him, give him a good one. Uh, th three times forty-two. Three times forty-two. Ding, ding, ding. Mm hmm. I come up with. I think I'm wrong. You're off by one. You're off by one. That's very close, though. One twenty-seven. It's 126, actually. 126. So you're writing all this in chat, right, Ryan? Mm -hmm. Okay, because yes. everybody can see it at the very bottom of their screen. Oh, no, they can't. Oh, yes, they can. I get, yeah. You know, yeah. last time we saw you, Ryan, or heard from you, one of our people on the show, Brian, who works late now, I guess, he was licking his knife, I think, and you, you scolded him and told him, don't lick your knife. Or don't lick your spoon or something like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah for a couple right. old men, we have a memory. Not I got to go. You got to go? Yep. Okay, well, um, go goodbye, Ryan. Nice to see you. Huh? Streaming tomorrow. What? Do your homework. Streaming tomorrow? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay. Sure. We always like to hear from you, Ryan. All right, bye. Okay, bye. Now, my question is, guys, do you think Ryan is really a kid? I do. Okay, here's, I do. I'll tell you why I, I, why I don't think he is. Okay. Okay, so so the reason I do is he's, you ask him if he, I, he you ask him uh, if he was still 10 or something like that, or third grade. And he said, no, I'm going to be in fourth grade. And you ask how old he was, are you still 10 or something like that? Mm -hmm. I, I forget what question. And he, he's, he, he was... No, I'm nine, but I'll be ten in two months. No, wait a minute, one month. You're right. Well, an adult would have the actual answer very quickly, you yeah. know. I would think. Well, I don't those know. Are kid, those are kid answers. Right? Do you right. think they're kid answers? I, okay, I agree. Well, because when I said, "Can you turn on your camera?" and he didn't want to turn his camera on, or he said he didn't have a camera or something. He wasn't on the camera last time, if I remember. No, he wasn't that time either. And I would think that he wouldn't mind it if it wasn't an adult doing a kid's voice. But I don't know. You know. Yeah, that, 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 that makes you suspicious. But I think those are, Jeff and I agree, those are kid answers. Mm -hmm. The way okay. kid answers. Yeah, all right. Uh, let How me see. Was, he said he was 10 years old? Yeah. 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 Here comes Tony. 
Uh, he should be speaking Tony. of ten year olds. Speaking of ten year olds, <laughs> here comes Tony. Hi, Tony. Tony Magno. Yes, Tony. Hi, Tony. I think Phil is smart, right? Imagine that was Phil. <laughs> huh? He's Phil is smart. Is that kid? I mean, smart, <laughs> smart Ryan. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Phil, Phil. Probably, except with smart Ryan, smarter. That's true. I was nice. That was cute. I thought actually. Yeah. Right. Well, you, he was on the show last time. He was on the show. Somebody brought up something about Trump, and he said Trump's bad for the country. Well, he's right about that too. The kid. Yeah. yeah. I mean, what? That's maybe why he goes by Smart Ryan. Yeah. Well, could be. Could be, but anyway, um, when was the last time he called? It had to be a year ago or something. Oh, like that. No. Yeah. Really? Not, maybe no. not that long ago. I've only been on the show a little over a year. No, really? Yeah. Seems it like 10 long. years. I know. <laughs> it seems, like, yeah. it seems like yesterday, and you know what a bitch yesterday yeah. was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, so um, I, I decided to use a different background tonight. Do you like that? It looks nice. Do you like it? That's I my, do like that's, it. That's, that's my living room. I, I like it too. Oh, is that oh, yes, oh, it really is. Oh, isn't it? Oh, hmm? I thought it was a fake background. A, a fake background? No, it's not a fake background. Oh. No. Oh, you're just in another room. Th that's right. Yeah. No, but I'm not in another room. Oh, you're not? Okay. No. Okay. If I turn this off, you'd see a green screen. Okay. But I went around the house and took pictures of parts of oh, my house, and then I decided, hey, this one, today I was, I had a, a um, uh, call Zoom call with my lawyer, and uh -huh. I, I did the thing with the uh, with the, you know the nighttime thing was on here because I hadn't changed anything, so I decided I don't want to put that up there. So I put this up there because it happened to be on here, and uh, it looked good. And I just said I'll leave it that way for tonight. You know, maybe I'll do it all the time. I don't know. You know. Mm. It's a little, it, it, it's, it, it's static, however, it's just a photograph, but it, no, you can't tell whether it's live or not, you know. So. I hear the people who own the building are uh, giving you a, another day. What, to, what, what, what do you mean another day? To complain. What do you mean another day to complain? That they were complaining to you. No, they weren't. No. Who? who hmm? What do you mean? I don't know. I get information well no pam called marjorie well, that isn't the situation no uh, the situation uh, is is that you know we thought that when we walked out of that courtroom everything was solved okay well, that was the and end, there wouldn't right? be any shenanigans yeah. and there and there are shenanigans ones that mm -hmm. ones that nobody can play because we all agreed to this in a court of law it's all on the record you know and and uh, um somebody one of the parties involved is making it difficult. Oh, and our lawyer is just taking a hard line on it, saying you can't do this, you can't do that, and you better not do this, and you better not do that. So, yeah. you know, I, I told him, I said, I'm gonna, I want to keep you on retainer. How do we do that? And he said, send me, send me $1 a month. Oh, that's pretty good. That's he awesome. said, and I, it'll, keep me, I'll keep, it'll keep me on retainer. And there anytime you, you have problems with these guys, you just let me know. Nice stuff. You know. Nice good. Lawyer. Lawyer, Jeff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, good lawyer. Well, I mean, he, he's, a, he's a very good lawyer. He's very good. For $100,000, I well, hope. Well, I'll tell you what happened. They sent us a, uh, um, a um, rental agreement, right? And it was like for one year. And... In New York, if you have a stabilized rental agreement, it's up to the renter to decide whether he wants one year or two years. And then, of course, after that two years is over, that one year is over, the the uh, rental agreement gets automatically renewed. They cannot deny you a renewal unless you maybe didn't pay rent or whatever. Okay, so that that's how we're worried about. It. We wanted two years. We don't want yeah. one year. Um, and uh, I start reading this this thing, this uh, this rental agreement, and it's like they went to a stationery store and bought one of those rental agreements you can buy there. Oh, like, you know, like and it, and it has things that absolutely don't pertain to this apartment house. It says, for instance, uh, uh, we are not responsible for whatever goes on in the laundry room. What is that? <laughs> and I'm going, what laundry room? 
<laughs> there is not a laundry room in this apartment house. And I mean, there are a lot of things like that. And you suddenly realize that this was just a boilerplate piece of paper made for a rent stabilized oh, yeah. lease in New York City. You know? It's called cheap lawyer approach. Well, I hey, mean, Alex, when yeah. you want to do your clothes, then do you have a do you have a space in like the like downstairs where you could do like your laundry? No, no there is no laundry in this apartment house. Oh, oh wow! So you got to yeah, hey, listen. In they've unit. got they've got a huge. Um, uh, uh, downstairs they got a huge basement uh -huh. and the basement uh, used to be where they used to put the horses oh, wow. okay and the carriages and so it's a lot of room down there they could make it into a garage which they haven't done and they could make it into a, a certainly put a laundry room in there for everybody in the room. building well so all of us a lot of us have washing machines because it's a big enough apartment house washing okay. machines and dryers oh, in the apartment like we oh, do here. Okay. the good. only thing was that in this lease it said you are not allowed to have any pets washing oh, wow. machines or 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 smoke and wow. you can, probably have, can you slip a cat in alex if you wanted a cat again well you, you know but that's what this lease says now i know there are tons of people who sign the same exact lease i'm sure who have animals yeah. who have washers and dryers in their apartments, you know. I mean, so it, 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 it's like this really old boilerplate thing. They didn't even go out to a lawyer and say, draw us up a good lease here, you know? So, so if, you, if you signed it mm -hmm. and later on you had a dog or a cat, all you got to do is send in $10 to whoever the, the, the animal association is in your area and the animal becomes a service animal and you need it for your well-being well no, the American... forget about that forget about that uh okay. it, 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 it these animal. are things my lawyer said it are not enforceable right okay so okay. you know that's why you have a lawyer you know and this yeah. guy this is his yeah, specialty okay. this is his specialty but but anyway so that then we're, we're just having certain problems getting the the lease signed and um, so, uh, you know, or taking care of. They sent us a lease finally, but it wasn't what we wanted necessarily. So, well, the lawyer has to talk to them about it. Give them a give them a lecture on what they can do and what they so can't do. These do these people own the whole building? Or yes. Is it a management oh, yeah. company? It's a management. It's a management company. You want to know this building? Have you ever seen a picture of this building? Yeah. You know, go go on the web and look up Graham Court. Okay, or watch the movie New Jack City. It's the Carter. Okay, huge right. building. The footprint is huge. Three hundred apartments in this wow. building. Wow. Four separate little buildings within a courtyard. Right. right. It's gorgeous. Um, how much do you think these guys paid for this apartment house? About mm. fifteen to twenty years ago, I think. Millions. Oh, yeah. Would you like I'm to try saying, again? I'm going to say five million. It had to be five million. Oh, come on, five million. Uh, you know what? Uh, uh, five hundred million, maybe. Three hundred no. units. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Three hundred units. Plus. But remember, twenty years ago, that area was probably rough, right, Alex? I'm trying to think back then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'd, I'd say, what's uh, three hundred times a thousand? Mm -hmm. That's three million. Uh, Taking a guess. Yeah, um, you can't get an apartment in New York for three million. Okay, okay. okay. Twenty years ago, guys. Uh, okay, we're yeah, it was a long time. Ago. Twenty That's years ago, and you got to remember, you got to remember, this neighborhood was pretty shabby. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And this is a how about a half a million? Hmm? I'm gonna go three still. I'm gonna go five. Five million. I'm gonna go five still. I'm going to, the price is right. About 5 million? All of us could have gotten together here and probably with just cash on hand. Oh, no, Tom. Bought this apartment house. What, what, what is I'm the much, address of the apartment building? Much. How much did they pay for it? I'd rather not say uh, oh, on the air. Oh, no. Okay. Is it under, under two? Under two million? Yeah. Think again. Under one? Think again. Well, well, it's under one million. Foreclosure, Alex. I want that. The banks owned it. 
That's they pretty bought, close. What else they I bought this apartment house. I looked it up. Yeah. For $150,000. <laughs> Oh, yeah, they, I could have that. That's a Jeff and I could have paid that on our credit card. We, yeah, we could have, have all them. gotten together, pulled our credit cards together, and bought this apartment house back then. Oh. Now, let me, add, let me add this. That there about. was one other thing. There were taxes yeah. owed <laughs> on <laughs> this building, which had to also be paid off. That was another $150,000. Oh, that, 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 that's horrible. $300,000 you could have owned this apartment house. You know what you're talking about? That's a song and a dance. Now program. today, what's it worth? Oh, oh that building is beautiful. Alex. What would you say that's worth today? If you had a guess, I don't. Five hundred million. No, uh, not not, not five hundred million, but I'd say a couple hundred million. Yeah, easily. Yeah, three hundred apartments at its spot in that area is nice now. Yeah, I, I think like it's your well, area. Tony. I, I wonder if it's exactly. He's got a nice area. I wonder if it, it may be two hundred apartments, but whatever. It's still yeah, whatever. It's, it's huge. Big apartments, Alex, easily. And the thing is that he, they went. You know, when they bought it, it was just you know they would they 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 this place was a mess. You know, and for years, even while they owned it, this this building was a crack house. You were saying how bad it was. They were then. they, they were be... selling crack out of the first floor windows, out onto mm -hmm. the street. I believe it because I remember in New York in the nineties. We had, we had a next door it. neighbor who was here during that time, and he fought to get the cops to come in and clean everything up. And it wasn't when we moved in the night we the New Year's we moved uh, the we moved in in August that New Year's Eve. Yeah. Um, one of the kids who lives in this apartment lived in this apartment house was murdered right in our front gate. That's oh. that's the, the it was still a bad neighborhood. Okay. Wow. Since then, it's become very gentrified. You yeah. Know? <laughs> uh, but that's why it was so cheap. But you know the thing is, you get a bunch of people who get an apartment house, and it, uh, you know, it's 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 that cheap. And they pick it up just so they have property, right? Yeah. And then all of a sudden, years later, years later, years later, it becomes a, a real landmark and becomes a very important piece of property. And because you didn't buy it at that time, you still think of the way it was back then and you don't well, become right, any yeah. kind of, you don't suddenly grow up as a landlord, okay? Yeah, you're right. You don't suddenly yeah. chase, on top of that, I'm not saying these guys are bad or anything. I'm not saying they're good. But the fact is that they're not that good, uh, any landlords in this city. I mean, Marjorie had a landlord where she was, where she now has her condo. And he was considered one of the worst landlords in New York City. Would he be a slum landlord, Alex, that type of guy? Like, they don't do well, anything? Well, these guys were slum lords. Okay, because the what place. What do they say, slum Those guys never did nothing in a human No, 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 no. Do. That isn't it. They buy slums. Okay. Oh, that's what it is. Okay. 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 So, I mean, they own a slum. All right. So they're a slum lord. Uh, now it's, they're no longer slum lords. Now they own a very decent piece of property. I mean, if you want to see what this property is kind of like, if you saw murders in the building, the show on and and H. Where was it? Uh, Hulu. <laughs> Uh, this that was this the sister building of this building that they did it in. Uh, well, they they must have put money into it to fix it up over the years, right? I don't know how much they did and didn't do. Okay, yeah. um, I do know that. Excuse me, I want to get me get my cursor out of the way there, folks. Uh, I don't know how much they did, to be honest with you. Um, um, yeah, um, I, it it. I, there were, for instance, I see, I don't know what it was like when they took it over. So I can't tell you how much they did to either fix it up or not fix it up. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure they only did what they felt they had to do. Okay. Especially at that time. If you buy a well, slum it and it's a real slum, are you going to suddenly fancy it up? You know, what, what, what's, what's, why do you do something like that? I mean, I would do it. Out of sheer pride, I mean, but if, that's if me. The neighborhood's getting better and it's gentrifying you, and you're bringing in people that are going to pay a higher rent. Well, now they yeah. should make improvements. Now they yeah. should make improvements. And I don't think since we've been here, 
I haven't seen any real improvements, you know. Um, we have a courtyard that's shabby that they could certainly work on and get to be look better, you know. And uh, um, uh, let me see here. Then, you know, the, uh, uh, the uh, lobbies in the building, are, you know, they've got mosaic tiles and they're all cracked and stuff like that. You know, you've been here, Jeff, right? You know, yep. what, I'm, you know what I'm talking about. And yet, you know, you walk into our apartment and you get the wow factor. Everybody walks in and goes, wow, because they just came from the outside where it didn't look that good. You know, I didn't know what to expect when I first saw the apartment. But we came up and, you know, even the elevator is kind of shabby. You know, so it, it, it uh, I mean, I wish somebody else would buy this building who then wants to do a, you know, a reclamation of it. But there's also a tendency upon, upon, by all these landlords to take a building like this and uh, uh, what's the word they use? Um, uh, they don't, they want to refurbish it, okay? <laughs> and my feeling is that you don't want to refurbish it. You want to re, what's the word I'm rehab. looking for? Huh? Rehab. Rehabilitate. Well, right. rehab isn't the word I'm looking for either. Um, restore. Restore. They should. Mm -hmm. I would want, like for instance, they said at one point when we were going through all this, they said, "Well, listen, would you be willing to pay a little more money if we came in and fixed everything you know, and, you know, did work on the place?" Well, what that would mean is they would get rid of these great wooden doors and replace them with those hollow core doors. You know, they would lower the ceilings. That's what they've done in a lot of these apartments, mm -hmm. and and so on. And that's not what I would, I said, no. I said, if you want to talk about what you're going to do, if you want to do restoration, then we then we can talk. I said, but if you don't want to do restoration, you know, uh, I'd rather restore it myself, you know. But, I mean, it'd be, be a shame. If, you know, I wish I could show you. There's no way, I, you know, I could probably bring up my camera here and, and show you. But, I mean... I've got uh, ceilings that are 12 feet high, you oh. know. Uh, I've got, um, we've got nothing but wooden floors all throughout the whole, the whole apartment, except for the, you know, the kitchen and the bathroom where it's tile. Uh, you know, so if, if they wanted to do that, uh, I would be all for restoration, okay? But uh, I would rather do the restoring myself. Hello, no. Brian. Yes, uh, Jeff. What were you going to say? I think these people are not interested in restoration. Well, the, what they did do for a while, they were taking apartments like mine and cutting them up into two apartments. Now you're talking. We have a foyer. Okay. This what they, is how what to they, make what they did with these apartments that they set into two apartments is they took the foyer, made it another entrance for two doors that went into the apartment that they had split in half. Now, ours hasn't been split in half. Well, it actually, technically it has, because if you go down our hallway here, there's a place that looks like a doorway. You can see the door jam. Thing was, that was a doorway to the rest of the apartment back in, I don't know, 1920, when this thing was like an 18-room apartment. Uh -huh. There wasn't even an apartment. They considered them like homes, and you were buying a floor, which was a home. You know, I mean, it was amazing, but it's a great building and we love it and we, we love the history of it, you know, and uh, we have some, some decent neighbors, which includes, among others, uh, uh, what's his name? The, uh, the black actor who was in the movies with, uh, uh, who was it? Oh, God. Um, the black actor who's in the movies. The black actor's in the movies. Not, not black actor. Name a black actor. Um, Danny, uh, Danny, Danny. Oh, Danny Aiello. No, not Danny. Danny, I, Danny Aiello. Danny was in, in that, oh, I, made, I mentioned the white guy. I'm sorry. Glover. <laughs> Danny, Glover. <laughs> Danny Glover has an apartment Glover. here, which I Danny think Glover. his kids live in. One of his kids lives in, and Diana Ross's daughter has an apartment oh, wow. here. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. And I hear she put in central air conditioning. Oh, that's a, that's well, if they idea. don't like us having washers and dryers, I mean, what are they going to think about central air conditioning? Okay, yeah. Anyway.
I remember you uh, when when you guys didn't have all the video stuff. You used to have to go downstairs to do something to the furnace or something. Hmm. Uh, some big thing. No, what happened was what you're talking about is the electricity. Oh, was it? Yeah. It's so easy for me to blow a fuse, and unfortunately, I have a I have a fuse box here. I have with, with switches and all that, right? But it doesn't blow in the box. It blows in the basement. <laughs> And then you got to go down to the basement and flip the switch up. The only thing is you can't get down there unless there's somebody on duty. And there's oh, only well. somebody on duty till like 10 o'clock at night. So if you blow a fuse at 11 o'clock at night, you're in the dark till the next morning. So your rental agreement is concerned about no hanky-panky in the laundry room that doesn't exist. But you can get blown in the basement. Yeah, right, exactly, exactly. <laughs> so anyway, that that's you know it, it, it's uh, uh, you know it, so I have a, for instance my air conditioner in my bedroom. I have a cord going all the way around and into the dining room where I have another plug that goes to a different thing. So it, it if it were to blow, it would um, blow on uh, another switch. Uh, okay, <laughs> but it doesn't because I'm not overloading it with one air conditioner. But if I turn the air conditioner on, plugged it into the wall in the bedroom. And then had yeah. all this stuff on. Forget it. We're going into the dark. So that's, ne that's that. never been solved. In my in the house upstairs when I used to take care of my mom, her air conditioner is on this, is in the bedroom. If I said, Mom, if you turn your air on, tell me because if I use the microwave with her air conditioner on, oh, th that goes on with anybody. Is, that goes and on all with she anybody. used to do is never tell me, and it was to be on. And every time that I would put something in the microwave, all the lights would go off in half the house. I'd have to well, go down. When, when was your building built, Al Alex? Well, that's another good question. When do you think? Well, I don't. I don't know. I, uh, in the night in nineteen twenties. Try nineteen hundred. Wow. Okay, so in nineteen hundred, there was no such thing as a high no. amp dry air conditioner. No. And so there's old wiring in the walls. They no. You probably no, have a no, uh, thirty uh, amp breaker. This for your this apartment. building this building didn't have electricity. Oh. This building had gas. <laughs> And you had to turn on your gas lights every night. Okay? Wow. About 1920, they put in the electricity. And when they put in the electricity, when they built the apartment to begin with, it was only eight stories high because the elevators were hydraulic. And you can't build anything. You can't have an, an, an elevator go higher than the highest point of water on the, uh, in, in the area or in the island. Or whatever so eight floors was as high as we could go the anthorpe which was built several years later goes up to the 12th floor because they have electric ele they had electric elevators our ele elevators now are electric um, you probably have a 30 amp breaker for your whole apartment because in the 1930s when they put electricity in mm -hmm. almost everything was light bulbs and a 30 amp breaker would handle all that yeah it, yeah you didn't find washers, dryers, air conditioners, microwaves, all these uh, electric heaters, all these high amp draw things didn't exist. No, no. And, and um, um, you know, so, so, I mean, we have that problem. We also have problem with water. Uh, hot water, I really want hot water water pressure is pretty good. Cold water pressure dribbles. Hmm. Wow. You know, and we've tried to solve the problem for as long as we've been here. And I keep getting excuse from the last time I mentioned it to the super. He just went, what can we do? You know, that uh, the uh, and the, the cold water, I think, comes from the roof and the hot water comes from the basement. And it's the hot water that's got pressure, but it's the stuff that's coming from the roof, which is just right up here. Nothing. Well, they may have modified. The, the 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 hot water line which tends to if it was galvanized like they did in the olden days mm -hmm. uh it usually gets rust build up and you don't have any water pressure they may have been on the cheap side and just replaced that and then don't say it. may have <laughs> say well we don't know cheap. you know we don't know and we don't know who owned it before this how uh, do they get the water up on the roof when it runs out the water you know that's a good question gravity what do you mean? Rain? What if it don't rain? I they said used gravity. to have probably where they collected water when it rains. 
Yeah, but now I, th I think the, it's on the roof. I don't know, you know. But all I know is that my cold water is like, uh, ew. it's a, you know, it's a real problem. Yeah. It's a real problem. Yes, Jeff. My uh, grandfather mm -hmm. uh, worked during World War II in the Brooklyn Navy Yard. Mm -hmm. It was, you know, he's a mechanic type of guy or whatever, mm -hmm. and he. Caught, he, he cut his leg. I remember we didn't have infection diseases at that to solve those problems. No, you didn't have antibiotics. Antibiotics. No antibiotics. Any biotics that they yeah. had, they went to the war people. Mm -hmm. Okay. So he had to get the solution was they cut off his leg. Hmm. So he could no longer work at the Navy Yard anymore. So they decided they would buy a building. Mm -hmm. Probably somebody in the family helped them out. And he had a, a building in Harlem. And he was going to run it, live there, mm -hmm. and manage it. Mm. And it was kind of halfway OK. And I remember that being a kid. And mm -hmm. this, you know, the early, the late 40s, okay? Mm -hmm. But he goes ahead and dies as things happen. And then my grandmother is running this building in Harlem. And everything was a disaster. Oh, God. And she had no capabilities to handle that stuff. Emotionally, physically, intellectually, whatever. And ultimately, uh, they sold the building. Yeah, but, also. But I can remember, I can remember going there over the weekend and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Wow. Isn't isn't Harlem known? I mean, originally, many years ago, as a bad neighborhood for Latinos, where the Bronx is bad for for black people. Uh, that I don't know. I do know that Harlem stopped at 125th Street. Okay. Yeah. Then it moved down to eventually 110th. But yeah. everything between 125th down to 110th on the on the east side, I think, was called Spanish Harlem. Okay. All right. Um, Harlem was at one time uh, an in spot for people to go to. You know, back in the 40s, the 30s, and so on. When we hit the 50s, it started getting bad. And by the time we got to the 60s it was when I first saw Harlem, because I used to have to drive through it every day on the bus, uh, it had turned pretty much into a disaster area. And, it, you know, it, it, it wasn't until a few years ago that it started gentrifying. And now, of course, it's, you know, it's, oh, you got a place in Harlem, huh? When we first got nice. a place in Harlem, we had to go, we got a place in Harlem, you know. But we, we, what we got was terrific. And look, you know, it's paid off for us. Oh, yeah. You know, um, it, it, you know, and if I, you know, if I were to tell you what the rent is, you would like, you would, you would gasp for what I've got. You can't get that here in New York City, mm -hmm. you know. But it's like Howard Hughes. But, but you know, here's something that people don't understand. When I talk to out there, and we're, we don't have a large audience tonight. Apparently, this is not a discussion that they like or is important to them. So fuck all of you. Uh, but uh, because I'm going to keep talking about it, when I talk about things like rent stabilization, most people don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Uh, because this does not exist in other cities in the United States. There's a thing. This is some New cities York have a thing. World. Some cities have a thing called rent control, but rent stabilization and rent control are two entirely different things in New York. You can't get a rent control department in New York City any longer, because they stopped doing that many years ago. But those apartments which were rent controlled were grandfathered into being rent controlled and the one thing you could do especially with rent control is you could will your rental to a successor to a child or whatever so 
But people don't understand rent stabilization or uh, and in other cities. And my lawyer, who really deals in this kind of law, says it only exists here in New York. And when I go to, he says, when I go to lawyer conventions and they say, what do you do? And I says, I do, I, I do, you know, tenant law. They don't understand what that is exactly. He said, because New York City is the only city where we need tenant law. You know, because there are so many unscrupulous landlords out there that they're all trying to take advantage of people. In, in California, you know, I've never heard of this that you're talking about, but in California, if they take a neighborhood and do rent control, it turns into a slum because the owners don't take care of the property. And one of the biggest proofs of that is in Detroit, all the high rises in Detroit that became slums and now I don't know what they are. Well, that was not the case here, you know, because, no, no, that's what I'm because saying. Uh, I read, I read, went online and I read that 50% of all apartments in New York City, now that's a lot of apartments, oh, yeah. right, are rent stabilized. But that's different than rent control is what you're saying. Well, rent what control is, is, is the older form of, oh. you know, taking care of rentals legally. They yeah. stopped doing that, I don't know how many years ago, and it was replaced by rent stabilization. Okay. But those apartments, which were grandfathered in to rent control, still are. I would imagine there are people in this apartment house. There, I, I know, I met one woman who's lived in this apartment house all her life. She was born in 1935. Wow. <laughs> okay? And she lives in a rent-controlled apartment. I would imagine she got an apartment the size of ours, okay, and maybe is paying under a thousand dollars a month, okay, if that. Huh. So you know, and uh, there's some law, and I don't know. I forgot to ask my lawyer about this, but at my age, if Marjorie suddenly wasn't working either, we could get them to completely freeze the rent on this place. And never have it go up ever again, you know. But so, uh, oh, wait, oh, wait a minute, here comes uh, here comes uh, wow, here comes Tommy Yamaguchi. We ought to talk more about your property. We may have rent control too out there. Yeah, hello, Tom. How are you this evening? Wait a minute, there we go. Yeah, I'm here. Yeah. Um, I'm probably getting myself into a lot of trouble because I'm far from an expert in it, but I happen to live in a rent-controlled city. Mm -hmm. uh, although, yeah, our, our rent control board is actually called the Rent Stabilization Board, so yeah. I'm not really sure. Uh, rent stabilization but, probably uh, in their definition is different than the rent stabilization here. Well, one thing is, well, you know, we we enacted. He rent lives control. by he lives he lives by the way where in Alameda where where do you live? Berkeley. I live Berkeley. in Berkeley. 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 Uh, Berkeley and Santa Monica were among the first. California cities to really enact really strong rent control. Yeah, and in fact, it was uh, enacted just uh, months after I moved here. Uh -huh. um, the one thing that that uh, that's affected California was a couple decades ago. Um, there was a state law that was uh, and a cost uh, bill, but anyway, uh, a state law that severely limited uh, what, uh, you know, uh, what uh, cities could do with with rent control. And there's been attempts to, in fact, there was an attempt in a recent election to overturn it or to, to modify it. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, like you were talking about people being able to pass on housing to, to, uh, to uh, succeeding generations. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, what we have, unfortunately, with the state uh, law, mm -hmm. is you know what's called uh, vacancy decontrol. So, if a, so after uh, a tenant moves out, the landlord can just charge anything that they want. It's it's decontrolled. Mm -hmm. But um, but yeah, we still have rent control here, and uh, we definitely have uh, tenant lawyers. We definitely have. Um, Mm -hmm. Well, the Berkeley Tenants Union has been around for a long, long time, mm -hmm. of providing services as well as the the, the, the city's uh, rent stabilization board actually provides. Uh, well, let me put it this way: where well. where Jack lives, they probably never heard of rent stabilization. Never heard of it. Uh, the reason I'm calling, 
one of my grandkids uh, just found out that their rent on their two-bedroom apartment in a suburb of Dallas is going up a thousand dollars a month after the first of the year. Whoa! How, how is that? I mean, aren't because there some? There, there are no there controls no, on rent, right? No rent controls. Uh, there is a thing called the Texas Tenants Union, <clears throat> which, uh, uh, if uh, a landlord does not maintain an apartment, sometimes can get you restitution, but you cannot stop paying your rent. You cannot. Uh, 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 there's no appeal process. It's like they got you in a vice and they're squeezing every minute. Uh, this kid was paying more a month for a two bedroom apartment than we were paying on our mortgage for a three bedroom house. Right. And, and, and that's the one that's going up, right? That's the one that's, uh, yeah, his, his rent or, or his, he and his wife, Mm -hmm. Their rent is going up a thousand dollars a month. Start of a new year. So what are they going to do? They have no idea what they're going to do. Move in with Grandpa. No, they can't move in with me because uh, I've got one of my uh, stepkids living in my spare room now. Well, <laughs> uh, you want to hear? You want to hear something funny? Though? I was talking to the lawyer today, and he brought up the fact that we could, if we wanted to, have. Uh, people living here and we said well how many people could we have living with us and he said how many square feet are you and we said 2,500 square feet and so we did the math and he said you can have 31 people wow. so, <laughs> <laughs> he said but really you're only allowed two Marjorie's allowed one and you're allowed one now, now how big is your, is your apartment minute, John Larkin was putting yeah, his hand um, in, in my apartment I live in the Tenderloin and um, I pay about 1400 a month. It's a studio. It's got a bathroom and a kitchen, you know, separate. Mm -hmm. um, but um, the, there's, the homelessness is so bad in the city. Um, the city is paying landlords to put homeless people. And there's homeless people now moving in to my building. And it's, get, it's getting fucking crazy. It's, I got to get wow. out of here. I mean, okay. I'm, it, it, you know, I'm, I'm about ready to go, well, I just call my landlord and say, hey, I'm now homeless, so I'm not paying rent anymore. You call the city, get the money from them. <laughs> wow. Wow. Well, don't move to Texas. I feel, I feel like a dope. You know? you know, well, Texas, they wouldn't do anything. Oh, you know? yeah. So I own my own So house. you see what I was saying, it. Tom? I, maybe, you know, it's fine. Where you are, these things exist a little more. But you go to a place like Texas, they never heard of rent stabilization or rent control. Oh, sure. Yeah. You know? you're, yeah. not gonna, you're not going to like what my rent is, John. Well, my rent. Own I own my. I own my own house. It's almost two thousand square foot. It's a detached. Yeah, but you you probably paid it off. Uh, well, I could have, but I'd rather have the write off <laughs> at this point. But in any case, um, yeah, I owe about seventy thousand five hundred on it. Yeah. yeah and but... my payments are a little over six hundred dollars a month, oh, wow. plus taxes and insurance. Yeah. By the way, by the by the way though, by the way, remind them. What stock you sold a few years ago? Uh, Cisco. Cisco. Oh, yeah, Cisco. Cisco and Intel. Intel. Uh -huh. Intel. Mm -hmm. Made a lot of money off of that, did you? Uh, yeah, quite a bit. My father invested uh, at the right time. Mm -hmm. so, okay. You got a good memory, Alex, for some, uh, uh, things like that. <laughs> I the house is there, so I'm going to be rich. The house is worth. <laughs> the house is around here. Really going, yeah. The house is around here going for one and a half million. It's hard to believe. Oh, listen, mm -hmm. it, uh, New York City, I would say the average one-bedroom apartment, maybe, mm -hmm. what, let's say one-bedroom apartment, I'm sure is somewhere up around 4000 Oh, in Manhattan, Alex? Oh, yeah, Manhattan, absolutely. Oh, yeah. I know I know. in Queens, by me and Shecky, like two bedrooms around here is going for about 2000 <laughs> Yeah, 4000 is normal. All these new high-density buildings that are going up around the, the valley right here, mm -hmm. yeah, they're all, they're all 4000 yeah. Yeah, but I mean, it, 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 it it's uh, you know we're we're, we're into the uh, two. Ryan's you know, house is probably worth well over two million dollars. So I'm that. telling you that we're paying well below that. So th that's why we're you know we fought to keep this place. It costs oh, us yeah. a lot of money to okay. keep it, but 
you know, if we'd been paying rent all these years, it would have come to about 1800 bucks a month. So we're happy to put it out, you know. Is that your view? Or is That's that... my view out the window in our, uh, in our in room. living, oh, living room? room. That's the living wow. room. Yeah. Nice. Uh, yeah. Oh, it's a, it's a gorgeous. It's gorgeous. Yeah. Wow. If you look downstairs, you can watch all the shootings. Yeah. The only, oh, it's not bad over there. The, only, the only problem that we have is that view is being impeded now by some mm -hmm. buildings creating high rises on mm -hmm. this side of the park. About we're on 116th down on 110th. Uh, they're they're starting to build these higher buildings, mm -hmm. and one of them's blocking our view now. And if they ever decide to put up uh, a higher buildings right outside our window, you know, we, we could eventually, if we lived here long enough, not have the view of the city. But right now we do. That's nice going into the yeah. city. Yeah. yeah. So, so Alex, you, you, are you on the top floor? You said yeah. that the building was, yeah, you're on the top floor. It was, it was a limit of eight floors when that uh, building was, yeah. was. Yeah. You couldn't okay. have elevators in a building. You could do. 20 floors if you wanted to if people wanted to walk upstairs but for uh -huh. a building with an elevator they could only go as high as eight floors uh -huh. yeah um and then a couple of years later electricity came in so they could then build them with you know 12 stories 20 stories whatever uh mm -hmm. the sister yeah. building to this building called the anthorpe is uh is uh, 12 stories high and it has electric Mm -hmm. And we used to have, by the way, we used to have eight elevators in this building, two in each wow. section wow. of the courtyard, uh, but uh, they took them out years ago. But the shafts wow. are still there, so if you know <laughs> you wanted to, you could buy the apartment house and then uh, re-put in those elevators. Maybe uh -huh. Jimmy Hoffa's in one of those shafts. N no, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> no. But I mean, it, it's it's interesting, you know. It's a, it, we're, we we live in a very this is a very historic building, and as it's better known some places, the Carter, you know, from New Jack City. So, in fact, I t sometimes we'll come up with we'll take a cab here, and I'll get off, and the guy will look up and say, "Oh, the Carter," even though it still says a grain court on there, but it's everybody knows it as the as the Carter. Um, How big did you say your uh apartment is alex 2500 square feet so you have a so you have roughly a thousand feet more than i have in a three-bedroom house yep 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 i hate you i get exercise just walking from one side of the apartment to the other you know yeah <laughs> yeah it's all one it's all one jeez in fact we you had, don't even have an upstairs downstairs huh? it's all on yeah. one level we oh, had it we had we we were we were cat sitting for this friend okay and the cat lives in a, was living in a one bedroom apartment, right? Uh huh. The cat comes here. We got a hallway. It goes from you know from one end of the uh, all the way down. And this cat was using it like you could hear her galloping every night when I'm trying to go to sleep. <laughs> she brum 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 brum. Then turns around brum 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 brum. You know, it was it was great. And all of that, and New York right out your window. And New York Where, right out my window. So you open the window at the end of the hall, and the other end of the hall, you open a door. So, up, so up, this up, is why we up. almost this is why we almost drove ourselves broke was to keep this apartment. You know. You know what I see out my window, Bennett? What? A big box store. Really? Yes. Oh, oh God. Anyway, hey, listen. There's our theme. I know Jack's got to go because he's got a show next called The Intersection, which will be on right after ours. Uh, but, uh, hey, it turned out to be a nice group of people here tonight. Uh, and we started out with Alan, and then we got somebody who we didn't know who they were, and we got rid oh, of no, them. Jeff came and in. then we got <laughs> the three-year-old, we got the fourth-grade Ryan, and then uh, we got uh, Jeff, and Ryan's we got uh, John. John, great to see you again, by the way. Call us more often. We love the time. Hey, uh, Alex, I, I wanted to tell you, did you um, see this documentary about the, a band called the Sparks Brothers? No. Oh, it's some band, but at the end of the movie, they the band Spark. What? Spark. The called... band is Spark. The, the, yeah. the brothers and, and, they. Oh, I remember about it tomorrow, right? Yeah. Yeah. But, at well, end, it, end it, of the movie, they're it, showing photos of them over the years, and there's a photo of them standing outside, and in the back, you, you can see the door. It says, "Live 105, 
No one will be admitted before 6 a.m. for the live audience. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, uh, okay. really? 59th Street, yeah. Anyway, I oh, got to oh. go here. Uh, uh, All right. Uh, 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 Tony, thank you. Thank you, Brian. Always good having you here. And Tom, great to have you here. It was a mitzvah we had you tonight. Everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a, wave, big, a big wave goodbye as well, okay? Let's see how out of sync I'm going to be. Well, that's not bad. Okay, here we go. Let me get rid of them, and I'll probably get really into sync now. Anyway, that's it for tonight. Jack Bishop is next with the intersection, as I said. We'll be back again tomorrow night, same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her. And while you're at it, make sure you get vaccinated, okay? And if not, wear a mask, damn it. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye.